Hi, this is Clark Bendel, and I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about the application of the new radius gauge measurement type to blended blade radius measurements. So first, let's talk a little bit about the radius gauge measurement itself. So this is a new type that we've added in the 365 software release demonstrating on a beta version of inspection manager that has that type added. So when we add a radius gauge, and here I'm just going to demonstrate the basic functionality of the radius gauge by itself. So when I add that uh, measurement type, I'm going to get this keypad asking me to enter either the radius or the diameter of the gauge that I want. So here I'm just going to create a one millimeter radius gauge. And you can see here in the 2D image, we get a single cursor with a, um, this is actually a thin black line with a white line in the center of it. And the reason that's a fine line is because we don't want to sort of distort the, the radius, which is actually the distance from the center cursor to the center of the white line is this one millimeter radius. So if we made that a thicker line, um, it would sort of artificially inflate the outline of this circle beyond that one millimeter radius. So that's why we kept it pretty tight. So the way the radius gauge works is that you've placed your center cursor on a particular surface and the software will go out and look for points in 3D space that are within that one millimeter distance of the center point on that surface. So it's actually searching sort of a spherical region. Imagine a ball centered on that radius and any point that falls inside of that ball gets used for the, the best fit plane determination. And you can see we have the green surface masking, which is showing points on the, the blade here that are close to the, the reference plane that's been established for that measurement. And we clear out a region in the vicinity of this, uh, the perimeter of the radius gauge. So we don't show any um, surface masking in that area to allow you to visually compare that perimeter to, you know, eventually to the edge of this blade out here. So, so it is sort of a plane based technique. Um, and you'll see as I move this cursor around that the size and the shape of that, that perimeter circle in the 2D image is going to change. So as I drag it off this blade onto this stationary vein, which is much closer to the probe. You see that the size gets a lot larger and the shape changes to more of an oval. And that's still representing a circle in 3D space, but that circle gets projected back into the 2D image space. And because of that viewing perspective, it looks like an oval. Similarly, if I were to drag that down here onto the shroud, which is further away than the stationary vein. You see it gets small again. And because of that viewing perspective, it looks like a really flat oval, but still in 3D space. If you look straight down on the shroud or the liner, whichever you may call it, um, then it, it, it is truly representing a circle in 3D space. So that's um, sort of the the background of the radius gauge and how it works when used by itself with no measurement plane. So now let's talk about this specific application to these blended blade edges. So for some engines, there may be a requirement when doing blending that the radius at the start of the blend and the inner radius in the center of the blend um, meets a specific, specific criteria, and that criteria may be based on the, 
the depth of the blend itself. And so we provide this sample image with an upgrade to 365. You'd find that in the samples folder on the D drive, and it would already have the measurements that we're going to demonstrate here placed on it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this individual radius gauge. Now, in order to measure or check the radius of the center of the blend, <clears throat> we're going to have to put a radius gauge out here in free space. And if we put just a gauge by itself out there, it's going to be placed on this far blade in the background, and that's not where we want it. So we're going to need to use a measurement plane for this application, and that's going to be pretty standard for these these blended applications. So let's first add the measurement plane. And so one thing you should notice when looking at this particular image, if we come over to the point cloud view and you look at where I've placed that measurement plane and then you look at the blade, you can see that the, the edge of the blade is actually kind of curled up from the plane where I've set it down here. And so one of the first things we need to do for this application typically is a point to line measurement where we're gonna use the edge of the blade as our reference and measure the depth of this blend. And so we really wanna have some of this green masking up near the edge of the blade. We're gonna place those point to line cursors so that we know they're being placed sort of on the plane of the blade up in that area. So instead of leaving the cursors down here, I'm going to take one of these and drag it up into this area, and I'm going to pull this guy out a little bit further. What I'm trying to do is get green near the edge of the blade down where that third point to line cursor is going to go, as well as up where the the two cursors that are going to go along the blade edge will be placed. So, you know, something more like that, so we're representing the surface of the blade out near the edge. So now let's add our point to line measurement because that's what's going to determine what we need for the radii in that blend region. So we're going to place one cursor up fairly high and then the second cursor we need to make sure we're keeping that one outside of the blend zone so we don't want to get too far down here into where there's been some material taken away but we do want to get sort of pretty far away from this upper cursor so that this line isn't you know sort of errant out here in 3D space as we extrapolate past this, this second cursor. So we'll go ahead and place our first two cursors up there, and then we'll come down here to measure the depth of that, that blend. And I'm just going to kind of try to keep those three cursors at about the same position relative to the edge of the blade. Okay, so here we've got a, a 4.01 millimeter depth of the blend at this location. And in the one maintenance manual that I've seen, it calls out a minimum radius of the, the uh, sort of blade or blend area entry radii to be two times the, the depth of the blend. So in this case, we would need to check for a, an eight millimeter uh, minimum radius for that portion. And then for the center region of the blend, it calls that a 5X minimum radius. So that would be like a 20 millimeter uh, minimum blend. So let's start out by placing a radius gauge so we can check this upper blend region. So once I click on radius gauge, you'll notice that uh, we have the first soft key here, which is populated with that 4.01 millimeter point to line result. And that's um, intended to reduce the number of you know, 
keystrokes or touches that are needed to enter that value as well as to prevent mistakes in, in copying that value from the point to line result. So we can just click that soft key. And then we also have a multiply function. And because we want the radius here to be at least twice the point to line, we're just going to hit the multiply and then click on two. And then we're going to save that as our radius. So now uh, what we typically want to do is bring that radius gauge so that it is the perimeter of the gauge is just touching on this sort of corner area, if you will. And here you can see that the, the radius of this circle is going outside of the, the material on the blade. So this is telling us that this is too sharp of a corner, if you will, that is not meeting the, the radius criteria. To meet that, you'd have to, we can pull the circle in a bit so that it's just touching down here and just touching up here. And that's telling us that this material right in this area would have to be removed in order to meet that <clears throat> 2x blend depth criteria. So we can already see that this portion would be problematic against that criteria. But let's go ahead and take a look at the, the inside of the blend to see how that does against the 5x blend depth criteria. So we're going to add another radius gauge. We'll click on our 4.01 soft key. We'll multiply that by five. And we're going to save that as the radius. And here we're getting a gigantic circle. And it's pretty clear right away that it's not going to meet that criteria. Now, something you'll find with this big radius gauge is you can't actually get the cursor moved far enough over to line it up with the edge of the blade. Um, now, to do that, I can switch over to the point cloud view though, and then I'm gonna drag this out and I can line it up on this side. And the way I'm positioning this is I'm sort of trying to put it kind of in line with the bottom edge of the blade if you just sort of line that up with the center of the circle for this purpose and and then trying to get the edge of that that perimeter lined up with the the edge of the blade and you can see that maybe a little better in the 2d image there so i'm just going to pull this back just a little bit okay so pretty clearly this blend would not meet that 5x criteria and so this whole area that's inside the circle would need to be removed in order to meet that. And the way we've set up these radius gauges or uh, in the, the sample image is we've taken this upper one and, and pulled it up higher so that it is tangent to the 5x gauge at the bottom and then tangent to the blade edge at the top. And so as you look at this, if you're the person doing the blending, this would tell you, okay, I maybe need to take a little bit off down here at the bottom of the blade, and then anything that's inside this larger circle would have to come off. And then this little area that's outside of the smaller circle would also have to come off. So your profile would come down like so, follow this, perimeter, these two perimeters like, like so, and any material outside in this area you'd need to remove in order to uh, meet that criteria. And, you know, this, I'm not sure what engine this image was captured in, and that that criteria probably does not apply to this particular blend. So um, I wouldn't wouldn't say that in general this blend that we're showing was done improperly. We're just trying to give an example 
of the 2x, 5x criteria that we are aware of and um, how that would be done. So that is an overview of radius gauge as applied to a blended blade. Hope this is helpful. Thanks.